Hello friends, welcome back to your UPSC. So today we will study about another topic of geomorphology that is Fluvial landforms and glacial landforms. So let's get started. So first we will study about fluvial erosional and depositional landforms. So before studying fluvial erosional and depositional landforms, we will first look into various aspects of rivers and drainage pattern. So first we will study about river or stream type and their drainage pattern. So in stream types or river types, we have five types of streams. First is consequent stream. Consequent stream is a stream that flows in the direction of slope. Next we have subsequent streams. Subsequent stream are the one which joins the consequent stream perpendicularly. Okay. Next we have resequent streams. Resequent streams are running are the rivers or streams that are running parallel to the consequent stream but they are minor streams and they join subsequent streams okay so this one is consequent stream this one is subsequent stream and this one is resequent stream another one is obsequent stream obsequent stream is the stream running away from the subsequent stream okay so this is obsequent stream and the another one is insequent stream insequent stream runs in any direction and it is not dependent on slopes and hence it has no per particular direction okay next is river capture river capture is actually the natural division of headwater of one stream into the channels of another okay typically resulting from rapid hard headward erosion of the later stream what does that mean see this is a consequent stream okay flowing in this direction then a subsequent stream joins it but the subsequent stream is also having huge amount of water so what it does is the subsequent stream flows in this direction and it changes the route of this water. So this water is left alone. Okay. And from here the direction of the river or the stream changes. This is also known as stream piracy. Okay. As we are stealing the main path of the river or the original river path okay so the direction is diverted now instead of going this way the water flows like this okay instead of going this way and this area is left alone okay and here where the diversion takes place is known as elbow elbow of river capture now we will look into the main drainage patterns so the drainage patterns are formed by the flow of river and streams in the drainage ba basin so the pattern in which rivers flow is known as drainage pattern so on the basis we can classify uh, drainage basin on the following basis drainage pattern on the following basis first is independent structure independent structure they are not affected by any physiography okay so we have parallel streams then we have dendritic streams parallel stream are the one which runs parallel to each other okay simply next is dendritic stream it is also known as tree shaped stream so it is like this having many branches So this is dendritic. Next is dependent on structure. So this one was independent on structure. Next is on dependent on structure. We have three types. Basically we have three types. First is radial. Radial actually what happens is. See if this is a mountain. A river origi originate from the top of the hills. Okay. 
so it will flow in this direction this direction this direction so when we look from upwards we will see it will be something like this so this is known as radial pattern next is trellis method trellis pattern it is formed due to erosion so in it what happens is we have soft rock and hard rock so the soft rocks get eroded but the hard rock remains so the river flows like this so these are the hard rocks and the flow of water is like this from here here in the channels next we have rectangular pattern it is similar like trellis pattern but the river crosses each other at 90 degree okay next we have centripetal one centripetal is just opposite to radial here the river falls in some depression okay like in lakes or something like that so they are not outwards they are not going outwards they are converging okay Next is deranged pattern. Deranged pattern is formed by like this. One stream is flowing like this. One stream is flowing like this. Another one is flowing like this. So it is formed by insequent streams. Insequent streams we have studied. Next is unrelated to structure. Unrelated to structure we have antecedent and superimposed streams. Antecedents are the one. See. When the Himalayas were not originated, there were rivers flowing. Okay. From, from upper areas. Like from China. So, what happened? When the Himalayas were formed, the rivers were cut off and others formed another direction to flow. Okay. So the best example of this one is Brahmaputra. So it has changed its course. Initially it was flowing like this but due to formation of Himalayas it has changed its course. So this is known as antecedent and we next we have superimposed. Superimposed one is one river is flowing and another river comes and joins it. Okay. So this is known as superimposed. Now we will look into life cycle of the river. So this life cycle of the river is very necessary to study the landforms formed by erosional and depositional deposition of sediments. So in the river process we have three stages of river. First is youth stage, second is mature stage and third is old stage. So this is the hill or mountain. From here the river originates. Okay. So here it is in youth stage. So it will be very fast. And it basically will be having erosional tendency. So it will erode away this area. Next is mature phase. Mature phase when it comes downhill but its speed is now also very high. Okay. So this is mature stage. Here it will be transporting the sediments. So the basic tendency here will be at the mature stage will be transportation. And in old stage when it will get slowed down very it will be very slow and at the last stage it will fall into any water body. So in the old stage it will deposit its sediment. Its sediments. So this is the depositional stage. Okay. So now we will study the process of erosion. So the process of erosion, the basic process of erosion we have studied already. They are corrosion, that is solution. Then we have corrosion or abrasion. Then we have alteration. And the last one is hydraulic action. We have studied all four. Next one is process of transportation now how is the how are the sediments transported 
so first is suspension in suspension we have lighter particles which are carried away by the water okay next is solution solution is like solution we have the sorry the i'm so sorry the rocks they get dissolved in water and they flow with the streams now next is traction so the traction is similar to the one which we have done in uh, aeolian landforms so in aeolian landforms we have done creeping so traction is similar like that but the only difference is erosional agent so the erosional agent here is water next is saltation saltation we have already done now we have process of deposition so the process of deposition is basically sedimentation now we will look into various landforms formed by pluvial action so the first one is valley see when the water here in the youth stage when the water runs it is very fast so it takes very narrow path and when it is taking narrow path it cuts the cuts the land and it cuts the land in such a way that it acquires v shape that is very steep from below and wider from the top okay so these are valleys formed by fluvial action so first we have v shaped valley now when this v shaped valley uh, it deepens up due to hydraulic action or due to movement of water it is known as gorge and the much deeper gorge is known as canyon okay next we have waterfalls waterfalls are formed due to differential erosion differential erosion we have already done when we have soft rock and hard rock arranged alternatively so the first one is cascades cascades are when water descends through series of steps so this is known as cascade then we then we have cataracts cataracts are the most powerful on large waterfalls that we see okay so they are the la large waterfalls then we have chutes chutes are large water forced through a narrow vertical passage so the cataracts have large area to flow but chutes have large amount of water but they have small area to flow okay next is horse tailed waterfall when see this is the rock and when the water falls maintaining its contact with the bed rock this type of waterfall is known as horse tailed waterfall on the contrary to it plunge waterfall is the one which in which as soon as the water comes here it just loses its contact with the bed rock and it falls down so this type of waterfall is known as plunge waterfall and the other waterfall is known as horse waterfall horse tail so now we have done waterfalls now we will look into the third land erosional landform that is interlocking spurs interlocking spurs are also known as overlapping spurs see what happens is this is a hill then this is a hill then other hill then other hill they are interlocking each other okay so because of their interlocking or we they have projected ridges okay and they are extended alternatively so this one is extended now this one will be extended this will be extended and this one will be extended from the opposite sides of the wall of young v shaped valley so now what happens is when the river takes the passage it has to take a curved path okay 
so this is known as interlocking spurs it looks similar to the mea river meandering but it is not a meandering river why first reason is it is a erosional landform okay here the speed of the river is of the stream or the river is really very fast and it is formed due to erosional actions and ne next one is it is the meanders are formed when the river reaches its mature stage not its youth stage and it has meander acquires curved part due to deposition and erosion at the same time okay next we have structural benches structural benches are see these are the hard rock then soft rock then hard rock then soft rock when they are alternatively arranged horizontally then the water when it when it flows it erodes hard rock and then soft rock then hard rock then soft rock so this type of benches are formed and this type of landform is known as structural benches next we have rapids now in rapid what happens is the in the huge stage river actually breaks a huge amount of rocks and in they are bigger in size so they are protruding rocks arranged in the pathway of streams down the slope and when the river crosses these it actually do not flow normally it jumps and flows okay so the flow is like jumping pattern so this is known as this landform is known as rapids next we have potholes port holes are actually small depressions small depressions they are formed why they are formed see if we have hard rock in which soft rock is embedded so this soft rock will be eroded very fast due to steam stream and this area will be left alone and this area is known as port holes and next we have plunge pools plunge pools are actually formed mainly due to waterfall so when this waterfall downs it actually forms a depression in the land okay and this depression is larger than the one in the potholes and this is known as plunge pools okay now as we have done erosional landforms now we will jump to erosional and depositional landforms So now the first basic erosional and depo erosional depositional landform is meander. So meandering river is formed. See how the meandering river is formed. This is the normal part of the river initially. When it reaches its mature stage, it starts depositing, because of which its path starts curving. And when it starts curving. see the when the river moves it erodes this area and deposits its sediment in this area okay so this area is for deposition while this area is for erosion then this area is for deposition and this area is for erosion now this is the initial stage i'm so sorry i i just have said wrong so when the river moves this area is for erosion and this area is for deposition so because of this what happens is later on this river path it acquires snake like shape so here when the river flows it erodes this area and deposits its sediment here deposits its sediment here and then erodes it its area and then deposits its sediment here so because of this deposition and erosion the river acquires a snake shaped 
pattern which is known as meandering of river and when this meandering of river it grows very deep so because of which what happens is these two area which we can see are very close they will come co in contact with each other and later on the river will acquire this path okay and this area will be left alone so this area is known as oxbow lake and it is now detached from the main stream now we have pools and riffles pools and riffles are they are actually depressions so the pool is the la ha is having larger depth while the riffles is having shallower depth next we have estuaries estuaries are the tidal mouth of the rivers okay next we have caseta caseta are hills and ridges with gentle slope on one side gentle slope on one side while steeper slope on the other okay so here we have erosion of landform erosion of the area and here in this tail we will have deposition so this is a tail and this is the eroded area so we have these are casetas next are terraces terraces are actually step like formation formed due to consisting of flat or gentle slopes so this is the pathway of river so when this river get flooded it reaches till this high okay and here it deposits its sediment because of which the steps are formed and these step like structure are known as terraces now with this we come to the end of erosional deposition landforms now at last we will look into depositional landform depositional landforms are first is flood plain flood plain is actually what happens is when this river it has this original path and when it gets flooded its area expands and it comes till here okay now the river is flowing till here and what happens is when it flows here it deposits its alluvial sediments here okay its alluvial sediments are deposited when the flood is over and the river it retreats back to its original pathway so this area is having alluvial deposit and this is a very fertile area next we have le levees they are high silt deposit found in the lower course of the river so this is the river path and here what happens is due to siltation the river makes a natural barrier on both side and here is the river flow so this natural barrier are known as this natural barriers which are formed of silt are known as levees next we have alluvial fan alluvial fan are actually see this is a slope and when the stream flows down with huge amount of deposits when the deposits are finer they actually are spread in the form of fan shaped structure see this is a fan shaped structure fan shaped structure this is known as alluvial fan and when this river is carrying this or the stream is carrying a more bigger particles and the slope of the stream is steep and the debris are more and less water so it will form conical shape instead of fan shape okay so the conical shape will be formed so that feature is known as conical cone 
and the previous feature was known as al sorry the first fe this feature is known as alluvial cone while the previous feature was known as alluvial fan now we will look into another feature that is delta deltas are most important depositional landforms they are triangular tract of sediments deposited at the mouth of river typ typically when it diverges into several outlet so before falling the main stream of the river it divides into various distributaries okay and here the silts or sediments are deposited and this area where the sediments are deposited is known as delta okay so the large delta where the sediments are deposited if for example brahmaputra delta is known as so this form is known as arcuate delta next we have asturian delta asturian delta is formed when the river directly flows without forming any sort of delta or very small delta which is actually flooded by the tides and get eroded away so that type of delta is known as asturian delta then we have bird foot delta bird foot delta is formed at the area where we have high tides okay so okay sorry we have like bird foot delta is like this okay so it is not as big as aquate delta but it has branch shaped structure which can be you can relate to bird foot okay so these are bird foot delta this is arcuate delta this is asturian delta see basically deltas are formed in the areas where we have calm sea so in the areas where if we have very like very violent sea the deltas or the silts will be eroded away so the deltas will be not formed so the for the formation of delta we need calm sea okay next at last we have braided channels so braided channels in it what happens is when the river is very slow its pace is very slow it could not carry heavy loads with it so what it does is it deposits or it deposits its load of sediment in the pathway so here what happens is small small patches of sediments are formed within the river and this type of river is known as braided river now we will look into the fluvio alluvial arid landform so this is formed in the arid areas when the arid areas are eroded by fluvial action so the first one is pediment pediment is the fluvial deposit across the slope of mountain so this is the mountain so when the water comes or rainfall comes so here the sand is deposited or whatever sediments are deposited and this pathway is known as pediment and the pass from which we can enter this this area this pediment area is known as pediment path or pediment pass next we have bazada bazada is where the area where the river flows okay so here the river flows and this area is known as bazada next we have playa playa is accumulation of water so initially here the river was flowing okay so this is the tract of the river which is known as bazada but originally the river does not exist okay so now we have small patches of water these are known as playa playa are actually playa actually do not have any other water source from where the water can come or go okay so it is locked here and it remains here for very long time and this is known as playa next we have balsan balsan is the area which consists of sink sink is same like playa but is small in size okay so sink playa or bazada is known as balsan 
now with this we complete our alluvial landforms now we will jump on to glacial landforms so glacial landforms we will first study about periglacial landforms before learning about periglacial landforms we have to learn some terminologies first is first terminology is snow line snow line is actually see this is a mountain which is covered with ice but we have the region here which is permanently covered in ice regardless of the season okay so this is known as permafrost area which is covered with ice 24/7 whole year regardless of any season and below here we will have snow but seasonally we will have we will have ice cover but seasonally we will have ice cover and when the temperature is warmer the ice will melt okay so the area between seasonal snow and permanent snow is known as snow line okay next we have perma permafrost permafrost is actually formed due to thermal action okay not because of water so the permafrost is a ground which is always which is below freezing point for at least 2 years or more okay so what happens is this is our land which is covered with ice so this area is the active layer which actually is covered with ice or which is actually frozen only during winters and when when the summer uh, when the season varies it would or it can it can disappear it can come again with the varying season but the per, below it lies permafrost layer permafrost layer is a ground at or below freezing point that is 0 degree celsius for at least 2 years or more so it permanently still stays in frozen stage now between these active layer or below this permafrost layer we have thallix thallix can be here present here here anywhere okay they are the unfrozen layer of sed sand consisting of soil and sediment deposits and can occur at below or above 0 degree celsius so their temperature can vary okay now we will look into some periglacial landforms periglacial landforms are actually formed as a result of nivation nivation is where the snow flakes they convert into leaves leaves are accumulation of snow flakes okay and ablation ablation is where the sediment sorry where the ice this is area so see this is the slope below the snow line we have area where the snow can melt okay so here evaporation or sublimation of the snow can takes place so this is known as area of ablation so this is ablation then we have surf sirac formation then glacial action and iceberg formation so sirac formation is this is this snow is formed from these depression these are known as sirac formations okay so these are sirac formation then we have glacial action or iceberg formation now we will look into the periglacial landforms the first periglacial landform is patterned ground patterned ground is actually see the ground having certain geometric shapes okay i suggest you guys that when we are studying you can look into the pictures in through the net okay so that you can understand this better so this is patterned ground it, it is having certain geometric formation 
due to freezing and thawing thawing we know that is freezing and cracking up of soil okay so contraction and cracking up so this is known as patterned ground now we have palsas palsas are low region of permafrost with permanently frozen ice core with overlying soil so these are low region of permafrost permafrost that is discontinuous we have continuous permafrost that is the whole layer is present but we when we have patches of permafrost this is known as uncontinuous permafrost so in uncontinuous permafrost what happens is this is the patch of soil on the iceberg these are known as palsas and when we have mound of earth cover on the ice formed ice fo they are known as tingos okay and tingos ranges from 70 to 600 meters in height next we have soliflexion lobes soliflexion lobes actually see what happens is this is the area now when the soil it comes down it unevenly come downs okay at different rate of flow so a tongue like structure is formed so a tongue like structure is formed like this like this and these are known as soliflexion lobes next we have falconomers or block fields they are exposed rock surfaces that have been broken by the frost action so that much rocks are buried under the cover of angular shattered boulder so they are like rocky pathway you can say we have broken rock pieces are arranged all over next we have rock glacier rock glacier are not exactly glacier they are the rocks that slips along the region of terminal moraine like the glaciers do okay lastly now we have done done rock glaciers now lastly we have thermokarst thermokarst are uneven land and so with the depression or elevations so we have somewhere we have elevation somewhere we have depressed land okay form due to frost heaving frost heaving is actually upliftment of the land because of so when this land get frozen so we have upliftment of some land soil so this is known as frost heaving so the uneven land is formed uneven land with depressions and elevations is formed which is known as thermocrast now with this we complete periglacial landforms now we will run to glacial landforms in glacial landforms we will see two types of pro erosional processes so the first process is plucking plucking is actually see this is the mountain and this is the rock embedded in it so when this rock it falls down or it comes down this type of breaking of rock is known as plucking then we have abrasion abrasion we all know okay so these are the two basic processes which are glacial with in which the glacial erosion takes place okay so the first erosional landform is cirque 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 is also known as kam kar or kori see what happens is this is the mountain and due to erosion one area one slope it acquires this shape that is horseshoe shape okay horseshoe shape this is known as cirque and when this cirque is formed on the two opposite sides of the mountain it is known as arete and 
this area of this conical part of the arid is known as col now when this cirques are formed on all sides of the mountain so we will have pyramidal conical structure formed okay so this pyramidal conical structure is known as horn okay it is also known as pyramidal peak next we have when the cirque see when the cirque it gets a depression the slope gets a depression okay so this depression is known as tarn and when the tarn is filled with water this is known as tarn lake okay next we have crevasses crevasses actually what happens is we have glaciers here when this glacier this are the glacier when this glacier moves there is a crack between these two glacial land parts or the fracture these fractures are known as crevasses next we have nunatak nunatak is actually what it is it is a rock mass standing between the ice okay so these are the ice and here we have rock mass standing between them next we have car crag and tail crag and tail is similar to caseta okay so the crag and tail is similar to caseta and it is formed due to differential action what happens is this is the hard rock structure which was invaded by soft rock so this soft rock due to glacial action in this direction so the soft rock get eroded away and it gets deposited here okay so this is known as tail and this area this hard rock area which stands here is known as crag next we have rocky mountain rocky mountain the structure is similar like crag and tail but rocky mountains are formed due to moon abrasion and plucking so here what happens is this is the front part and this is the movement of ice so this is the upstream area which is also known as toss this area will be known as toss of rocky mountain and this area will be known as lee of rocky mountain so here abrasion will take place because of which this area will be smooth and here plucking will happen because of which this area will be rough next we have grooves or striations striations these are minor fractures so we have crevasses so when the crevasses are small they are known as grooves next we have glacial mills glacial mills are known also known as mollins mollins are actually vertic ve vertical well shaped structure or well shaped shaft like shaft they are circular they are known as glacial mills then we have riggles riggles are actually transverse ridge of bed rock that have been exposed okay so the ridge of bed rock which is exposed due to glacial action next we have petronster lake petronster lake are actually series of lakes so this is series of lakes which are joined they are actually joined by single stream okay next we have froths froths are actually long narrow inlet with steep slides sides or cliff so it is similar like the we in which we have done inlets inlets we have done in coastal landforms so they are froges so we we have like steep walls on the opposite sides and they are long and narrow inlets okay next we have hanging valleys hanging valleys also we have done so hanging valleys are actually when one valley is here and 
we have an one valley from one valley stream is falling to another valley this sort of pattern is known as hanging valley and this wall this flat wall is known as truncated spurs spurs okay truncated spurs next we have finger lakes finger lakes are elongated glacial lakes which were initially linked with a bigger lake but they have now detached next we have drum line drum line are actually both erosional and depositional landforms they are small hills and this type of landform is also known as basket of egg topography so they look like the eggs are placed in the basket okay so with this we complete our erosional landform now we will jump on to depositional glacial glacial depositional landforms so basic depositional landforms first is moraine moraine are accumulation of unconsolidated glacial debris in the form of ridges deposited alongside glaciers so these this is the glacial flow and here we have moraines okay next drum line we have done we have glacial tills and or boulder clay they are actually see they are finer particles bigger particles so they are unsorted glacial sediments deposited okay next we have now we have done the depositional landforms now we will jump on to glacial fluvial landforms so in glacial fluvial landforms we have they are formed see this i told you is the area of permanent snow here we have area of seasonal snow so below the it what happens is the snow will start melting so now both water and ice will act as erosional agent okay so first glacial fluvial landforms is asker asker is long winding ridge of stratified stand, sand and gravel so this is sand and gravels this is a ridge formed in the pathway of the stream okay next we have came came are actually mound composed of they are mound composed of sand gravels they are actually accumulation so there is a de depression formed when see when there is when the ice melts we have both water and glaciers which are running so when the water cannot carry glacier so the heavy glacier will it will stay on the river path and this will form a depression so this glacier when it melts a depression is formed so this depression in this depression sediments accumulate and when the accumulation it enhances it forms mound and this is known as came okay next we have cattle so initially when the depression was not filled by sediment okay or sand or gravels so this depression was known as cattle and then we have small hills of less than 15 meters these are known as hammocks so we have cattle and hammocks and lastly we have outwash plains they are also known as sanders they are formed when the glacier sediments are deposited the plain is formed due to glacial fluvial deposits okay and this area this outwash plain is really very fertile
so that was all in glacial valleyway landforms in it we have studied eskers cane cattle outwash plain and hammocks so with this we come to the end of our class i hope you enjoyed today's lecture so now let's meet in our next lecture till then take care and have a nice day